Hi, this is Katie Fahrenbacher with GigaOM TV's Green Overdrive Show, and I'm here with Ian Wright, founder of Wrightspeed. And last time we saw Ian, we were on the racetrack, but here we're today at their new facilities, um, standing in front of their new technology, the digital drivetrain. And Ian's going to tell us a little bit about this technology. Okay. So it's, it's an electric vehicle with a range extender generator, so a range extender EV. So the wheels are only driven by electric motors. In this case, there's two of them. One drives each back wheel. Um, they're geared electric motors, so it's a high-speed motor with a two-speed gear reduction integral to the motor, and the power electronics is also integral to that. And what's special about that is it's very high power density. So the motor itself is about four times the power density of the motors that are being shipped today. Okay. Um, so that's the drive piece of it, and obviously since there's one motor driving each wheel, the differential function is performed in software. And you're going to be selling this to uh, people that are companies that retrofit trucks, but also uh, companies that are automakers that are going to build new trucks off of this. Yes, well, okay. we want to propagate the technology as widely as possible. Our, our official plan is that our first product is a retrofit kit for a medium-duty truck, this medium-duty truck. Yeah, and this is the Isuzu? This is Isuzu NPR. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so the kit includes the drive system I just described, the battery system, the generator system, the user interface, and then all of the control software. And there's quite a lot of control software. Um, Is that kind of the secret sauce? Yeah, we just filed a patent on uh, the vehicle dynamics control piece. Um, if you use the, this drive system in, in very high performance cars, and we have customers doing that as well, then you've got individual control of the four wheels, the speed and torque of all four wheels, so you've got you know, software control of the vehicle dynamics to an unprecedented extent and with unprecedented precision. So you can do some quite interesting stuff with that. And this is what the supercar is going to have in it also? Yes, it's, okay. a, it's actually the same motor, the same gearbox in the supercar. In the truck, there's, a, there's another stage of gear reduction out at the hub to get you down to wheel speed and torque for the truck. In, in the car, just, just direct drive from the gearbox to the wheel. Uh, ultimately, we'll license the technology to anyone who wants it. We can supply subsystems to vehicle manufacturers, we can supply complete drive systems to vehicle manufacturers, and we can supply retrofit kits for existing trucks. Okay. Tell me about the benefits uh, environmentally and cost-wise to your customers. Yes. Well, these trucks do in the order of 10 miles per gallon burning diesel, and you know, most of them that are on the street don't meet the latest emission standards that diesels are feeling grubby. Um, so they're having to upgrade that and add more and more after treatment. Um, on a cost basis, if you, you know, we don't. Not all the driving is done on fuel. Right? Some is done on plug-in energy. So if you compare it on a cost basis, we move them up to something around 30 miles per gallon. Okay. So you save a lot of fuel and a lot of money. Um, and then the, the turbine generator is a very, very clean engine. Meets the latest emission standards for trucks without any exhaust after treatment by a fair margin. Okay. Why use the turbine engine? What's the benefits of that? Uh, okay. So a generator engine is not the same as a car engine. They have to run um, at full power all the time. So if you try to use a car engine like that, then they have a fairly short life and they're fairly noisy. Um, the turbine will run 40,000 hours at full power quite happily. Okay. It's efficient at full power. It's very quiet. 65 dBA at 10 meters, it sounds nice. Um, so to get the same durability at the same power as a piston engine, the turbine is much lighter. It's much mm, easier okay. to install because it doesn't have a cooling system or a lubrication system. Um, it doesn't require all the muffling. It doesn't require any exhaust after treatment. So, you know, I'm actually a big believer in turbines for generator engines in, in range extended EVs. I think we're going to see more and more of them. So your target customer is a very specific type of vehicle owner that's burning a lot of fuel and being really inefficient. Yes, okay. and, and more than that, it's not, it's, not, like it's not the big rigs that are out on the interstates because they're, they're pretty efficient now. It's the ones that are in the metro drive cycle where they're throwing a lot of energy away in the brakes. Uh, and we have a bit of an advantage there because we can run very high regen power into the battery more than the other things that are out there today. And so you use the brakes much less and you recover a lot more of the energy. So one of the interesting things in trucks is that we really only have the space where the engine, the transmission, the prop shaft and the differential are. All this space outside the chassis we have to leave for the owner of the truck because they mount toolboxes and pumps and things there. Stuff, you, you never stuff know. they need. Stuff, yeah. So to start back here, we replace the rear axle um, with a new one that has the two drive motors in it and the gearboxes and the power electronics. So that goes there, then there's no prop shaft. And then there's a battery system that mounts approximately where the transmission used to be. 
it keeps the CG fairly similar. Uh, and then the micro turbine generator goes up there where the engine used to be. Of course, it's a lot smaller okay. and lighter. Okay, Ian, so you just opened up this new space. Tell me um, where the company's at, um, how many people are you guys, and, and what are you looking to do this year? Uh -huh. So we raised an A round in September last year and closed the lease on this place uh, at the beginning of October. We're now up to 20 people, and that's pretty much where we're going to stay for um, in the next nine, nine months or so. Uh, this prototype vehicle will be running in September. It's our first demonstrator. We'll be able to prove the fuel savings at that point. Um, and we're going from there. Kind of ramp up. Where are we on the supercar? Ah, oh, yeah. Um, well, we have one customer already signed up, and no, they're not don't want to be named yet, and we're talking to others. There's actually quite a lot of interest from the high performance space. Um, and the thing that gets their attention is the power density. You know, the fact that we have this tiny little motor that makes more than 250 horsepower, and it's all set up to drive wheels individually, so you can build a car with you know, over a thousand horsepower. Yeah. Um, when do you think that'll be out? Yeah, so that's, you know, that's a car development program, and so they take a while, so a couple of years. Okay. Well, I think you should give us the first exclusive drive of the supercar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Ian. I really appreciate it and uh, you showing us your new technology. Congratulations. Thank you.